<laughs> Gravity. Jingle, jingle. So Socket just roots around in his clothes here, like not his pockets, which means there's just like a bug on him, under his parka? He takes this realization very well. I would be less than okay with this. Oh, much obliged little bat thing. What is Momo anyway? I know his actual species name is a winged lemur, but there's only a few animals in the show that don't go by both of the names they're the fusion of. Sky bisons aren't called manatee bisons, thank god. Momo probably is a lemur bat based off of this one shot for book two. I guess the answer I'm looking for is lemur bat, but the colloquialism would probably be winged lemur. What are you prattling about, child? Great grandpappy saw the airwalkers last week. Hold up. So wait, were you just soliciting money from your own grandfather? For his own story? What the hell, man? Remember when I said Sokka whittles? Yeah, he whittles. He's interested in things. He has hobbies. Anyway, my question is, what the hell is that? It's a squirrel something. Chipmunk detective. It's interesting that this mountaintop air temple seems like it's the most heavily constructed out of the other two. The other two have left room for natural space and greenery, but this one seems to engulf the entire mountaintop, even if it might only be from this angle. I like this little competitive grin Ang gets here. The last time he probably ever got to stunt on some poor kid on a glider was before he even knew he was the Avatar. This is probably a bit of escapism for him back to those times, even if he seems pretty unimpressed with Teo as it goes on. Hey there, you're pretty good. Yeah, I know. Hell yeah, Ang, talk your shit. But I could do more than fancy gliding. Ooh, okay, I get that you're trying to show this kid up, but it really doesn't read well if the first thing you do after saying you're cooler than a paraplegic kid involves running. I know the point is that no one else can do this, even if they could walk or run, but still, you know, oh, it's a bad fucking look, dude. Another obvious one, but it cuts from Teo's sky drawing of Aang's face to Aang actually making that same face. Big dumb ears and everything. I really like how they don't make a big deal about Teo being in a wheelchair. Like, no one even says anything about it until the mechanist mentions it offhandedly later when he explains why they're there. I feel like little inclusivity stuff like that really sticks in the back of a viewer's mind. Place is unbelievable. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? No, just unbelievable. This is supposed to be the history of my people. Yeah, I mean, you probably could have rerouted this pipe so as not to take this guy's head off. Just like disrespectful, man, come on. Okay, for real, am I the only one that always thought these circles were eyes and this was some eldritch Lovecraftian horror of a sky bison? I'm pretty sure after looking at it right now that those are supposed to be like tufts of fur, but seriously, I thought for the longest time either the airbenders had some many-eyed bison god or the mechanist was way too into body horror. It's nice to see at least one part of the temple that isn't ruined. Look out! <laughs> what the doodle? Don't you know enough to stay away from construction sites? Okay, first of all, you were on the other side of that wall, so how did you know to yell look out? Secondly, you can't be mad at them. This is your fault. If this is an active construction site, you need proper flagging and signage and PPE. I'm calling the fucking Department of Labor on your ass, buddy. This whole place stinks. This is one of the very few conflicts in this show that I think is highly one-sided. This whole place does stink. My people became refugees after a terrible flood. I don't care if your village got flooded. I wouldn't walk into Machu Picchu and install air conditioning. Uh-oh, my town got burned down. Better go install satellite TV into the Pyramid of Giza. Are you kidding me? You absolutely have to have respect for this stuff. And if you don't, then yeah, you're a jackass. I've seen it when the monks were here. I know what it's supposed to be like. The monks? But... You're 12. That's a highly accurate guess, machine man. And I stumbled across this place. Couldn't believe it. Everywhere, pictures of flying people, but empty, nobody home. Then I came across these fan-like contraptions. So are you just not aware of the Air Nomad genocide? The murder of an entire culture? You're playing dumb here? Also weirdly in this scene. Look at this, that's not Aang's staff. I know I call it a stick as a joke all the time, but it's actually downgraded to stick here. We're just in the process of improving upon what's already here. I've got absolutely no love for the Mechanist. He's got a sob story that doesn't justify the total lack of tact he uses in his construction projects. I don't think he's funny or likable. And we're not even to the part where he shows his true colors yet. In this show, you can see some of the hermit crabs in the foreground. The same ones that Aang uses as a metaphor at the end of the episode. Man, I want Aang's side this entire episode. This would be entirely fucked. He's got nothing. His entire people are rendered from the face of the planet. And these guys are just willfully disrespecting his dead culture. Personally, I'd be totally up in arms. I'd be like, get the fuck off my mountain. 
Okay, so you brought me all the way down here to see an empty room. Wrong. It's filled to the brim with natural gas. So this place is an explosion waiting to happen. So this is made out to be a big deal, right? But later in the episode, they purposefully set it off. And I mean, no deaths, no visual damage to the temple. It's just not that big of a deal, it turns out. Yeah, I mean, you have to do your due diligence and plug the holes, but it seems like it going off is pretty negligible. <laughs> was right about the air. All I had to do was trust it. Let it carry me. Even though Teo's not an airbender, he really does have the spirit of one. I've been thinking, if you want to see what's in that room, I'd be happy to open the door for you. Great. This is a little weak for Mang, I think. We need to move the episode forward, but, you know, would Teo being a happy-go-lucky, carefree kind of dude really get Aang to the point of opening the door? I don't think so. He's had a really rude awakening to this whole tribe disrespecting his culture. I think it should probably take a little more than that. Blink and you'll miss it. The mechanist seems to be working on the schematics for the drill here. That's pretty cool. And that egg was just part of last week's lunch. The egg he's talking about was actually in the basket of the air balloon model, with a little smiley face on it. Aang gets pushed back from his own airbending move here, just a touch. Might be the only time we ever see that without it being the primary purpose of the move. You don't understand! You're making weapons for the Fire Nation! That's a pretty good twist, I'll give you that. The line, you're making weapons for the Fire Nation, has always struck me as, like, strangely adult. It's like, in shows, you really only see the fighting, right? You only see the face of the war machine, you don't really see the cogs that turn it. I just think it's an interesting angle, and a side of the war effort that's not usually explored. You're making weapons for the Fire Nation! You make weapons for the Fire Nation? Yes, Sokka, that is exactly what was discussed just before the commercial break. Thank you. It was about a year after we moved here. Fire Nation soldiers found our settlement. You were too young to remember this tale. This brings up an interesting point. So Teo's people have been shacked up here since Teo was a little kid. Zuko's been looking for the Avatar for nearly three years at this point. Zuko in a season three flashback says this. First we'll check each of the air temples. Then we'll scour the world, searching even the most remote locations until we find him. So if we're to believe all these things are true, Zuko definitely rocked up on these guys a few years ago looking for Aang. Zuko probably met the Mechanist. Ah, it's just a little observation for you, just a little uh, overanalyzing. You need to leave. Go! We're not leaving. Then hide, quickly. This is a weird moment. We're not leaving, but all right, we'll hide. In this one split second shot, Chin's hair is all disheveled, even though it has no reason to be yet. And then it's back to normal in this shot. When Aang hits him with a good old air slap, his hair gets messed up. So I feel like these two shots might have been in a different order at some point in development. Or maybe there were just two different animators working on the scene. Who knows? I've heard this sentiment that Sokka is actually the one that invents hot air balloons in this universe, which is just false, right? The mechanist has blueprints, a model, one almost built. A lid is actually the answer. If you control the hot air, you control the war balloon. Sokka walks in and helps with the finishing touches and gets it to work, but saying that he actually made hot air balloons is just, is, is just seems like it's not right, right? He says it himself, he doesn't even take credit for it. You know, a friend of mine actually designed these war balloons. No kidding. Oh, and we're gonna talk about the submarines too once we get there. Don't you even worry about that. Okay, we got four kinds of bombs. Smoke, slime, fire, and stink. Never underestimate the power of stink. All right, we've kind of discussed the stink bomb part, like with the eggs and all that, that makes sense. But where did you get all the slime exactly? You just have a bunch of slime ready to go? Okay, this is bad. Aang, they're dead, dude. If you didn't crush them with the snow, they'll suffocate in it. And if not, they're not on this mountain anymore, I'll tell you that much. This is like tens of people, dude. You can't do that and then act all high and mighty in the finale. And I've only had to use violence for necessary defense. And I've certainly never used it to take a life. So they use 3D models on these tanks, right? And some other stuff later in the show. And my question is, why do I think this works? Am I just used to it? Old bad CGI is usually pretty jarring, but it is stylized somehow. Like if you see old bad CGI in a live action movie, it is bad news, it looks awful. But maybe it just works better in an animated environment. There's something that makes my brain think it's a non-issue. I don't really ever hear it talked about either, so I guess it just works. 
This is the show's first attempt at a really big battle, and it's underwhelming big time. It doesn't really feel like a battle. To me, it's almost like a problem-solving exercise. No one really feels like they're in immediate danger, if you know what I mean. Aang and Katara can pretty comfortably just stand in the middle of the battlefield and do whatever they want. No one that's gliding ever gets shot at. Its stakes are high because it's a group of people's home that's on the line, and it's Aang's cultural and ancestral home. But the action really doesn't match the stakes. Those things are unstoppable! I think I know how they work. I remember my dad tinkering with a counterbalancing system. Something to do with water. Works great, huh? Teo, stop being stoked on your dad's weapons of war! Where's that war balloon? Alright, here's another big one I've been wanting to talk about forever. War crime. I've heard so many takes that the Fire Nation is a bunch of war criminals just for fighting a war. This is false. I'm not saying there are no war criminals in the Fire Nation. I'm sure there's plenty. But I've heard people call Iroh a war criminal for being a general or for laying siege to Bossing Se. Those aren't war crimes. You wanna know what straight up is a war crime? Using the insignia of the opposing military to gain an advantage. That is a war crime, in black and white, in the Geneva Convention. Iroh's a war criminal? No, no, no. Sokka's a war criminal. You smell that? Rotten eggs! There! That's where the gas is escaping! How many rotten eggs did you put in that room? So many that you can smell it 100 feet in the air? During a military battle? Look! They're retreating! Yeah! All right, that's funny. Score one for the Northern Air Temple. I realize it's like the hermit crab. Maybe you weren't born here, but you found this empty shell and made it your home. I don't know, man. I still think Aang has every right to be pissed about what they've done. But if he's cool with it, I guess that's pretty cool of him. This defeat is the gateway to many victories. Well, here's the long form setup for the Day of Black Sun. Good thing this is in here, otherwise we might be on the Great Divide levels of filler. I've never really been a huge fan of this episode, and after watching it with my overanalyzing switch flipped on, I think it's even worse. I don't really see anything redeeming about this episode. These videos are my honest opinions, and I've been totally fair to each episode up to this point, so I gotta be honest about the negative ones too. I don't think anything works. The Mechanist is unlikable from the start, they try to justify his motives with the Fire Nation, but even if that works for you, He's still just being a dick by destroying a sacred cultural place. Teo is bland as hell. I bet you didn't even remember his name until I said it a bunch of times in this episode, right? He's a nice kid, just not very interesting. And like I said, the finale of the episode, the battle, the action piece, just doesn't feel like an action piece. Just nothing about this episode works. What does work is my Patreon. If you want to see the next full episode of Overanalyzing Avatar and help support the channel, it's only six Canadian shekels to join up and be a homie. Special shoutouts go to my top patrons, Code Cannot, Derek Cornwell, Do Mutual Aid, Fritz Sullivan, Mana, Nicholas Abbott, Tiago Nascimento, Ricardo Varto, Skylo, Super Sniffer, and Parker Gass. Thanks a lot, guys. Next up is the Waterbending Master, which is like night and day between these two episodes. The next one is an absolute highlight of the season, and I'm excited to get into it. See you then.